It's so easy for people to go in a supermarket and pick something up. Not really knowing where it's come from. No, no idea. And the work, the toll that it's had on people in order to get that there. You do feel isolated, you feel on your own, you feel like you can't talk to anyone. That was part of a video posted by the Prince and Princess of Wales over the weekend for Mental Health Awareness Week. It's a trailer for a short film which highlights the mental health challenges faced by farmers in Britain. It was produced under the guidance of Princess Catherine and Prince William. The video was shared on their official social media accounts with the caption, This Mental Health Awareness Week, we've brought together the inspirational Sam Stables from We Are Farming Minds and the brilliant farmer Will for a very special film. This is the first major update on a project that Princess Catherine has been working on since her cancer diagnosis became public. Royal commentator Angela Levin says it's hoped that this is the beginning of the princess returning to royal duties. Angela, mental health is such a serious and worldwide issue. No doubt her advocacy on this is welcome, as is, you know, the potential uh, comeback. Yes, well, one hopes that this would mark the beginning of um, Princess coming back, but we don't know anything. Everything's kept very quiet. However, when um, Prince Charles became king, the duchy of asked amount of land that he owns um, went to William, and I think that that is for them, they want to build building houses on there for people who don't have homes, but they also obviously want to help them with the mental health. And Catherine is brilliant about that. She and William set up a platform about mental health many years ago, well before Harry met Meghan. And then he joined them and the three of them would talk about it and you know, try to make it a, a, a problem that you can actually go and see a doctor about um, and it's not shameful. And it worked extremely well. I heard from specialists that they had so many hundreds of people going to them and admitting they had a mental health issues. And now it's said quite easily um, uh, uh, to, to, to talk about it. And I think that farmers ha are having a bad time. There's a great attack about them eating any people eating meat, uh, the, you can't cope with the weather, you know sometimes it's completely out of order <laughs> and um, I think it would be a wonderful thing if she looked after that. I mean she's done very well with young children in, within families, how to deal with the, the problems of having uh, young children and the crying and the, the, the change that happens to you as a parent and I think she'd be brilliant at that but we have to wait and see whether she's just going to um, outline it or whether she's actually going to do it uh, her, herself and appear. And I think we're all very eager uh, to see her return and hopefully it's yeah. sooner rather than later. But this week, King Charles' first portrait as King was unveiled. Mixed reviews. Uh, this is what the artist Jonathan Yeo had to say about the piece. You're treading in sort of well-worn territory when you're doing a royal portrait, basically. You know? And so uh, you, you, you kind of want to you know, avoid cliches. And one of the things with you know, the fact he was going to be wearing a red uniform, um, and it's very bright red, the, the, the red, the Welsh Guards tunic. If you paint that in, it's going to be the first thing you see, and maybe the only thing you see. Um, uh, or do you do something to kind of like even it out? And so uh, the, painting the background, the sort of reddish pink as well, just seemed like a f slightly playful and more contemporary way of, of doing it. Angela, it certainly is a markedly different uh, piece from other formal royal portraits. What's your view and do you think the King has been well captured? Ah, uh, yes, I love it actually. I absolutely love it. Um, I think the, um, the face of King Charles is absolutely extraordinary. You have so much there. You have determination. You have humanitarian um, feelings. You have a sense of humour. I mean, I think it's absolutely extraordinary, all that within the King. And you think it is him, really, if you didn't know otherwise. I love the butterfly on his shoulder, which some people say if somebody dies, a butterfly comes back to look after you. That could be his late mother, Queen Elizabeth. And 
Um, it's also nature, which he is very keen of. And I love the colour because I think that it is, it is very, very powerful. And yet within that, you see the king all there with his badges and his uniform. Um, I think it's extremely moving and brilliantly done. I think that's a wonderful way to describe it, Angela. But it's also been announced that the King and Queen will be attending D-Day commemorations in the UK and France next month. Um, this will be Charles's first overseas trip since being diagnosed with cancer. Is this a testing of the waters for his recovery and, and later overseas trips down the track? Well, I think we've now seen him. He's had two or three weeks where he's been allowed to attend um, thought what he wants to do. Um, and two doctors actually signed papers that he was now well enough to travel overseas. I think the thing is, he's still having treatment, but he was like becoming um, like a lion in a cage and he was finding it very, very difficult to be at home. This man has worked day and most of the night since he was a very young man um, as heir to the throne and he's not used to being at home and the fact that he can come out you can see how happy he looks paler than normal but he he's actually yearning to be with people and he and his mother also felt very strongly about the military and that day is a very important one and he very much wanted to go. We've had a lots of things saying he's really working hard to get there and persuading people that, to let him and, and he and Camilla and Prince William are all going to go over there and show their respect. There won't be very many people who were there at the time and I think that that's also very important that you, it might be the last time when any of the soldiers who are were alive um, will still be living next year or the year after. And in a similar vein, Angela, Trooping the Colour is coming up soon. Uh, we understand there'll be some adjustments to accommodate the King and his recovery. What's the plan here? Well, the plan here, I mean, it's the, first of all, it's the, the most, or at least one of the most important and loved um, things in the uh, royal year uh, but he wanted to go on a horse usually the monarch is the, the, the queen was on that until 1986 and then she um, was driven because it was too difficult to her um, uh, and he wanted to go on a horse but he has agreed that he will now come with a carriage and I think that's much more sensible um, he will be there which is the key thing and it doesn't really matter quite how he gets there as long as he can get there. Absolutely. Now on to the Queen and it's been reported that she's pledged to no longer wear fur. We know the King and Queen have a dedicated interest in sustainability. Is this another branch of that worldview? Yes, I think so. I think that she said it because um, particularly the king is, is very uh, against that sort of thing. And I think she just fits along. Um, she's had one uh, hat with fur that she's worn, but the most recent ones um, are not real fur. And I think she's very pleased to please him. It's not a difficult thing to do. What is interesting is if she will continue to wear the things that are, were made of fur uh, when she's out and on occasions. So we'll have to wait and see. But I think that's a, an important gesture and um, very good thing for them to do. And finally, some stunning and previously unseen photos have been released by the royal family. I always love to delve into the archives, Angela, and which were your favourite here and, and what do these sorts of releases say to you? Well, I'm astonished that it's never been shown before. I mean, it's absolute treat. I love the one with the four mothers, the Queen, 
the, the then Queen, the Princess Margaret, Princess Alexander, Duchess of Kent, all these royal women who actually had babies within two months of each other. Astonishing thing, lovely for the babies as they grew up. And it was all taken by Lord Snowden, that Princess Margaret's husband, who was a photographer. And I, I think it just looks lovely because there you have the royalty, but you also have the mother. And I think it's lovely to join those two together. Absolutely agree. And Angela Levin, thank you so much for joining us this evening.